The Crown Tundra is going to be an interesting one, mostly because of the new features being added in with the DLC. And there's a couple of different ways we can look at that. One way is that we pretty much know everything the Pokemon Company is going to throw at us, even from official information. We know there's going to be story shenanigans, there might be a few extra small surprises, but it's all about the Dynamax adventure since that's the big feature to bring back legendary Pokemon, Galarian Star Tournament, Battle Facility for the fan service, and then some new items to increase the quality of life inside the game. There is a data mine, but the data mine is kind of weird and nuanced. It shows that there isn't really too much more new stuff to be added in, but the Crown Tundra definitely holds more than what we see on the surface. There's going to be two new Pokemon that fuse with Calyrex, cool, but then no real item additions. We have Galarian Slowking Evolution Item, Armorite Ore Equivalent, Hidden Ability Capsule, and that's it, just going off the list of data mined items. And the rest are key items, but those are most likely going to be for the story. There's probably going to be a Reggie Idol. There's probably going to be an item for Dynamax Adventures or the Galarian Star Tournament. We also need to remember about the Crown Pass, that we get an Armor Pass, so most likely a Crown Pass. That's just going to eat up another key item slot, and we know there's four story arcs in the Crown Tundra. If each of those arcs have a core item, suddenly the 17 new items kind of shrinks and there's not much room to play with. But there's another way of looking at this. And that's by applying what we already know about Pokemon game features, and that is what this video is about. So if you end up enjoying it, don't forget to leave a like, and definitely share this video with all your friends on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Discord, etc. Let's get the hype going for the Crown Tundra. Also, I want you to comment down below what secret features you think are going to be added in with the Crown Tundra. So I'm going to start off with something that I've been seeing a lot in the comments that actually inspired this video, and that's the Beast Ball. Because you could buy the Beast Ball in Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon after having a limited amount of them in the base games. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, technically there is the repeatable Winden Stadium, you become champion, ball guy gives you a random item. That doesn't really count because of how rare it is, and we already know that there's going to be an Ultra Beast storyline from the data mine. So you add all that together, and it really wouldn't be fair if you don't get a repeatable way of getting Beast Balls. And that's what Game Freak has told us with what they've done in other games. So this is what I mean. We already know some existing game logic, and we can apply that to the other information that we have. This is a major feature that a lot of people want, that a lot of people would be super hyped for, and it was also one of my most popular guides from Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Being able to buy Beast Balls changed a major dynamic of the game, and that's because Beast Balls aren't only for Ultra Beasts because they're very heavily used in breeding, and now there's going to be more accessibility to Generation 8 Pokemon for Beast Ball breeding, as well as probably some other Pokemon that weren't obtainable in Pokemon Sun and Moon or Ultra Sun Ultra Moon that now have new Beast Ball accessibility or something weird like that, and then you get more opportunity to use them in raids and stuff, so it's actually a massive feature that would maybe even just feel at home in the features list on the Pokemon Sword and Shield website, and people would be down with that. It's like, oh, ability patch, we have the hidden ability capsule, that's cool. Oh, another way of getting all these rare Pokeballs, that's really cool too. So it's that extra little bit of spice that's being added into the second part of your $30 DLC. Well, let's keep on going with it, because that's a lot of key items. And there's like some weird key item placement. So we have other items, key items, other items. I'm guessing this might be the crown pass, but what if the armor pass just kind of like turns into the crown pass, or it just kind of works for everything, because if you have the armor pass, that means you bought the DLC, so you don't really need that redundant of an item. And even then, it's like, how can you justify this many key items for a little bit of DLC story? You know what else is a key item? Verse recorder. You know what makes sense if it came back? Verse Recorder, but I actually think there's more reason for the Verse Recorder to come back with the Crown Tundra than the Isle of Armor, because I've given up hope on the Verse Recorder personally. If they wanted to do it by now, they could have. They could have seen the fan outcry of people wanting the Verse Recorder more than any other item and just patch it in. Not even as a part of the DLC, just patch it in. They had the chance to add it in with the Isle of Armor, just to make Pokemon Sword and Shield even better, just to add more value to the DLC, and they didn't. So I've given up hope. But then you look at all of these key items. Then you look at that little key item 
hiding between some of the other items and the item ID seems out of place. Doesn't really seem related to the story. And a reason why I can come back is the Galarian Star Tournament. You know, the verse recorder isn't only about, oh, I beat this dude online and it looked really cool, let me save that. It also lets you save battles that happen in your game for your single player. So maybe that's the feature. With the Galarian Star Tournament, they go, hey, you might want to remember some of these cool battles with your friends. Take this. Verse recorder. So there's room for it in the data mine, and there's also a new battle feature, battle facility-like thing that's coming in that would completely justify the verse recorder for even a perfectly casual level. That way it's not like, oh, this is only for VGC players and top competitive. Nah, this just seems like a feature that would warrant it in a very natural way. So I think that's possible as well. Once again, just kind of tying existing things that we know about other things from other games. And then we can talk about the other surprises that might be in the Crown Tundra. Max Soup was insane. Now I feel like the equivalent for Max Soup is going to be the ability patch because it just means you can have any competitive Pokemon from any base Pokemon and that's really awesome. But the funny thing is, because of a Pokemon home data mine, we knew there were going to be new tutor moves and we can kind of figure them out. We saw Burning Jealousy on the data mine, Burning Jealousy was officially revealed, and then things got a little extra wacky. But the Kramomatic is the best feature in the Isle of Armor and it was just a surprise. It just, just kind of happened. So what else could Game Freak do for incredible, absurd quality of life that's even 40% of the Kramomatic that would make the Crown Tundra absolutely insane. That is definitely a possibility, and we can also go and look at this list. This list hasn't really been updated since this website expansion pass feature thing existed, but it is lacking. You know, there's restricted sparring battle feature, there's new co-op play mode. Again, this has been here from the beginning, but there's nothing about the Galarian Star Tournament. So it doesn't necessarily mean if something isn't on this list, it's not going to be in the game. We have new tutor moves. Nothing for the Crown Tundra, but maybe there are going to be some new tutor moves. Returning tutors for things like Defog, Roost, that could be pretty big, or maybe even new moves, new features that we don't know about. Because the data mine is old. The data mine goes back to June with the Isle of Armor, so naturally a lot more development has taken place. But it's not like Game Freak finished it and then pushed out the Isle of Armor the next day. Data mine's even older than that by months. So I mean, we're looking at almost a year's worth of programming between the information we know and what's added into the Crown Tundra. Now I'm not saying that means, oh, there's gonna be new Pokemon or crazy new features being added in just because of how complete the data mine feels from what we know in the Isle of Armor. Like there's a pseudo map of the Crown Tundra in your Pokemon Sword and Shield game right now. But what I'm saying is, I think there's still room for a little bit of more to be added in and that could be pretty cool. And then there's just the other crazy things that were added in with the Isle of Armor that were just really nice, like Mint Island. So there could just be an area of rare items in the Crown Tundra. There could be another way of getting lots. There could be another digging person that does cool things and gets you other rare items. And I think the list can just go on from there of the quality of life, especially now that we have the ability patch. The ability patch is also, hey, Let's make the game even more accessible. Let's make it even easier to get things. Because the Cramomatic, you get all the rare items. Digging Paw, absolutely insane. Mix that with the Digging Duo, and then you do some other things. You grab a Mint for free because they respawn super easily, and now you got more accessible competitive Pokemon than ever before. Maybe the Galarian Star Tournament also has like crazy BP rewards. And if it is BP rewards, that also opens up back into tutors and other cool things like that. And also, one of the most hopeful items, item 1604, the Crown Tundra Armorite or equivalent. Now, we know that exists from a Game Freak screw-up, and it was also something that was, like, speculated about, like, hey, how cool would it be if there was another currency for the Crown Tundra because they added it in with the Isle of Armor, and who knows what this is going to be used for. My personal speculation is that you're going to use it for Dynamax Adventures because you do raids in the Crown Tundra, you get the new Crown Tundra thing, and they're like, hey, I need uh, 15 of these to power the machine so you can go on a raid. And then that's kind of it. But maybe there's going to be some other uses for it. You know, if we look at Armorite, Armorite Ore isn't just used for the new tutors. So there could be some extra things going on. Again, another like digging person that does some cool things. So even though we pretty much know about everything from the data mine and official information, it looks like there's going to be a lot more that can really surprise us in the Crown Tundra. 
And even if there isn't that much more, looks like we have some great stuff already. And I think it's going to be awesome. And even inside the things we already know, there's been surprises. Rental only on Dynamax Adventures. I personally love that because it actually means you have to earn your legendary Pokemon. And there's not going to be some cheese way of doing it and everyone's going to be on an even playing field. And it also kind of fixes the problems that we saw with the just standard max raid battles that you get a lot of useless teammates. Well, now you get to draft Pokemon and then use it for farming legendaries. That's some pretty cool stuff. So little tweaks, little surprises, lots of new features. There's also going to be some other new clothing items that we've seen in the trailer, but the website hasn't updated for that level of hype. So, I mean, there's just going to be good stuff all around for the Crown Tundra, and it's going to be pretty awesome when it comes out in just over a week. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.